Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Alex Sigrist for Pangyo Techno Valley TV. We will now begin the 2021 Pangyo Monthly Online Meetup, uh, Pangyo Korea and Station F France. Pangyo Techno Valley is currently leading innovation in Korea and Asia and also attracting uh, much attention along with the Silicon Valley of the United States, Zhong Guangchun of China and Station F of France. Here we want to create an opportunity to promote the values and business of Pangyo to the world. So we are preparing an online meetup venue once a month through the video conferencing channel Zoom with the Pangyo Techno Valley promotion channel, Pangyo TV, and foreign media present to uh, share major issues and deliver on those values. So today we're going to discuss the issues that are related to not only Pangyo Techno Valley, but also Station F in France with the French startup media channel, Le Café du Geek. First, let me say hello to Leo Tevenet. Thank you so much for joining us, CEO of Le Café du Geek from France. Hi, everyone. Thank you for hosting me today. It's a great pleasure. Can you quickly tell us a little bit about your company? Yeah. So Le Café du Geek is a French high-tech media. And uh, so the French people can read daily news and reviews and interesting articles about. And we also have a huge part on startups where we share innovation and not only innovation from France, but from all over the world. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and we also have Moon Young Im, the Gyeonggi-do Future Growth Policy Bureau Officer. Uh, and we have representatives from Gyeonggi-do as well as GBSA the Gyeonggi-do Business and Science Accelerator. So, uh, Mr. Im, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, comes out and thoughts. So today we're going to focus a little bit on the issues that we can talk about, the news issues, uh, but also about Pangyo Techno Valley and uh, Station F in France. So Pangyo Techno Valley is an R&D hub centered on high-tech industries like IT, BT, CT, and NT, aiming at creating a cluster where IT and convergence technology develop. Currently, 93% of the 1,259 tenant companies in Pangyo Techno Valley are in the high-tech industries such as uh, IT. Construction of Pangyo Techno Valley 2 and 3 are underway. Pangyo Techno Valley 2 will be developed as a fourth industry landmark by working with Pangyo Techno Valley 1 to create a startup ecosystem. So Pangyo Techno Valley 3 will be created as a smart financial hub and will supply customized houses in Pangyo areas to provide a work-life balance. So before we get into the issues, first to Leo uh, to mm -hmm. see if you have any questions or anything you would like to know about uh, Gyeonggi-do, about Pangyo Techno Valley. I have one uh, very important question and it's about the, the role that uh, Gyeonggi-do play in leading innovation in Pangyo and what are the plans for the future? Particularly, um, as we speak about after, uh, French Station F is playing a role as an innovation hub for French startups. So please tell us about your plans for cooperation. 네, 어, 경기도 판교 테크노 밸리를 소개할 기회가 이렇게 있어서 정말 어, 어, 영광입니다. 어, 경기도는 판교 테크노 밸리를 어, 글로벌 R&D 클러스터로 어, 조성하기 위해서 토지 개발, 첨단 기업 어, 유치를 주도하였고 용지를 기능별로 어, 배분해서 시너지 효과를 낼수 있도록 설계했습니다. 어, 뿐만 아니라 입주 기업들을 대상으로 해서 어, 커뮤니티 운영이라든지 스타트업 보유, 또 거주지 임대 보증금 지원 등 다양한 그 활성화 지원 사업을 하고 있습니다. 어, 저희가 지금 제1 판교를 완성을 했고 제2 판교, 제3 판교가 이제 지금 지어지고 있는데 아, 첨단 기업을 앞으로 더 유치하고 다양한 지원 인프라를 구축해서 판교 테크노밸리가 아, 디지털 전환의 역할을 하는 첨단 어, 단지가 될수 있도록 노력할 것입니다. 아, 스테이션 F가 아, 스타트업 네트워크 프로젝트로 어, 서울의 프렌치 테크 허브를 어, 설치해서 그 스타트업 간의 교류를 하고 있는 것으로 들었습니다. 판교 테크노밸리에도 어, 경기도에 우수한 기업들이 굉장히 많이 있는데 어, 이런 스타트업들하고 함께 스테이션 F가 어, 커뮤니티를 함께 구축할 그런 기회가 있었으면 좋겠습니다. Thank you so much for sharing that answer. 
Uh, and uh, Leo, thank you for the question. Uh, but I do know you have more curiosities about what's going on here. So uh, is there something else you wanted to bring up? Um, yeah, I also hope uh, Station I can cooperate with Fango will be very great. But, but what I want to know is after COVID, it seems there will be a lot of change in various industries. And I wonder which industries are leading Fango after COVID. So now. Yeah, Fango is in the bio industry, 13% of the companies are in the 어, 발전을 어, 주도하고 있습니다. 어, SK 바이오사이언스는 미국 노바백스와 또 제넥시는 한미약품과 어, 코로나19 백신 항원의 위탁 생산 계약을 어, 체결했다고 합니다. 또한 휴원스는 코로나19 LDS를 미국에 공급하기로 했다고 합니다. 그 외에 카카오, NC소프트 등 IT 기업은 인공지능 아, 빅데이터, 아, IoT, 기, IoT 기술들을 제품이나 서비스에 접목해서 제2의 전성기를 맞이하고 있습니다. 아, 반면에 제조업은 코로나19 장기화로 인해서 부품 수급에 차질, 또 해외 진출에 어려움을 겪고 있는 아, 현황입니다. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing with that. And I believe you know, we have some questions too about what's happening in France. 네. 아, 스테이션 F도 마찬가지로 판교처럼 코로나19의 그 영향을 많이 받고 있을 거라고 생각되는데 아, 그쪽에서는 어떤 그 여러 사항이 있는지 거기 근무하시는 스타트업 기업들은 어, 뭐 이게 비대면 접촉을 어, 못, 못하니까 비대면으로 이렇게 근무를 하시는지 또 어떤 산업 기회를 찾고 있는지 이런 것들이 궁금합니다. 스테이션 F faced various difficulty with the the first one is the one we all had to face, um, being locked down and unable to open its door for more than two months. The struggle forced everyone, and especially our startup campus, that huge, to reinvent itself and to pivot to digital first. And that change was great. After starting it, we realized that there were actually some key advantage of going 100% digital. First, on the attendee part, we now have a wider reach since anyone can join online events, not only Parisian. On the other hand, on speaker side, it's the same. Anyone can be now invited to share his experience at Station F without moving from their home. But last but not least, as today, online events, as today we are doing, uh, can be recorded, shared, and enjoyed for people that couldn't make it on time. So, for example, last October, Station F organized F for Future, which is a famous uh, event in Station F with more than 20 international speakers and more than 600 attendees. And that was a record. And one other difficulty that doesn't come right to your mind is the impact on startup application. And that's not really what you are thinking now. Of course, the number of applications went down, but really, really from a very, very small number. Uh, as much, almost as much as application were received this year compared to last one. But the biggest change was in quality of the application. It largely improved. We saw and we continue to see a higher milestone in short amount of time, like uh, advanced MVP, roadmaps that fit the current event, and impressive founders background and such. People are really putting more strength in their application as new habits and business has been made during this period. Uh, so thank you so much for this kind of Q&A to start us off. We've talked a little bit about our curiosities about Pangyo as well as Station F. So we're gonna move on to the main segment of today. Uh, and we're gonna talk about some of the big issues or the news stories coming out of Pangyo and Station F. Uh, we'll start off in Pangyo first and then move on to Station F in France in just a bit. Um, but I'll go ahead if that's okay and start off with that and go ahead and share my screen here. Let's see if I can get this for us. Is that working for everyone? Yeah, yes. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in Pangyo, there are a lot of large companies like Naver, Cacao, Nexon, SK Bioscience, uh, but also a big part of Pangyo is the SME, the small and medium sized enterprises, the startups that continue to innovate here. So uh, we'd like to share with you a little bit about Pangyo 
uh, being our first you know, international meetup here, but also some of the issues and news that have come out of it. So without further ado, um, I'll go ahead and get started. So we're talking about Pangyo Techno Valley, which is just outside of Seoul. It's a very short ride. Um, for me, a bus ride, like to the subway, it's a very convenient place to the middle of Seoul. No, 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 no. Uh, but we're going to talk today about Pangyo, first Techno Valley, second Techno Valley, um, as well as the stories, the issues that have come out of Pangyo recently in this month. Uh, so first, looking at Pangyo, first Techno Valley, which is where we are currently right now. Um, that's where we're stationed. And the vision of Pangyo, Techno Valley, first Techno Valley is to kind of be the center of a growth project of being these leading digital cities. So starting with Pangyo Techno Valley in the middle, and then these are what you see on the outside here are other uh, cities in the Gyeonggi-do area. So Gyeonggi-do itself is a province that completely surrounds Seoul. So that would include, of course, Pangyo Techno Valleys two and three, which are coming, as well as Yang, Yangju Techno Valley, um, Guri, Namyangju are represented, Gwangmyeon, Shiheng represented, as well as Ilsan as well. So that's really surrounding the entire city of Seoul in the Gyeonggi province. A uh, quick view of the projects of kind of the, the building of it. It's a very large area, um, but it was a project that was years in the making from 2005 to 2015. And actually, it was before that, that the planning had really started. I think it was around 2003. And then 2004, things started getting rolling. And then the, the building of it, this whole area, um, the urban support site for everything was around... Uh, it was around 5 billion US dollars. Um, so this is an incredible area that is really great to just come down to. It's really high tech too. Um, you know, they being in this area has been great because we've been able to experience some of the new innovations that these startups have brought up for us. So for example, uh, recently I got to go see a, uh, go to a cafe that had no workers. It was, you know, coffee made by robots. Um, so we get to see a lot of these things coming up early, and that's why I love just coming down here and, and just walking around before and after work. Um, so it's a really an amazing place to be. Now we go into the details a little bit, but uh, basically it's, you know, it's all about the infrastructure here, about giving infrastructure to startups while building an environment that helps um, bring startups with uh, knowledge and education. So that means startups plus larger companies plus universities all brought together to kind of build this synergy. And that's really what makes Pangyo work. So it's the financial support, but also the environment that surrounds it that uh, has been really helpful. Um, so just a quick look at everything going on here. Um, you know, there's been, obviously sales numbers are important and um, looking at the types of industries, IT is obviously the big one here at over 65% of the companies here, but um, what, what's more impressive to me is the, the, the number of companies, the 1,259 companies, 64,000 plus employees that are out here. And also uh, something that has been a growing trend and is very important, of course, to our community is increasing the ratio um, you know, of female to male workers, which traditionally in these kind of industries and startup industries around the world uh, can be very male dominated. So we are you know, seeing an increase in growth in the uh, amount of female employees as well as female entrepreneurs that we see out here. And that's very important to us. Uh, this is just a very quick chart that shows kind of the sales increasing every year. Uh, of course, it uh, goes without saying, you know, if you want something to be successful, there needs to be growth. And we are seeing that. Uh, and these are the sales in trillions of Korean won. So um, basically, uh, I mean, billions we're talking in billions of dollars here. So that's a good thing. Here are some of the companies you might, rec you rec might recognize. Um, some of the gaming companies like NC or Nexon are here. Um, industry leaders in certain areas like OnLob or Kakao, uh, which is the big messaging service out here. Large companies, so the conglomerates out here, such as uh, we mentioned SK earlier, um, but also Samsung as well out here. And of course the public agencies. So the startup campus, the Gyeonggi Center for Creative Economy and Innovation, or the CCEI, and the Global R&D Center. Um, we are right now part of the startup campus, or at least in, situated there. And so that's where we're coming from. 
Um, looking further, you know, we can divide this up into the industry leaders in IT, in biotech, uh, as well, well as culture tech. So IT, some of the big names, OnLob, as we mentioned earlier, POSCO, one of the big, much bigger, bigger companies in Korea, Midas out here as well. Switching over to biotech, we mentioned SK, Chem SK Chemicals out here is one of the big, big, big companies out here. And of course, uh, if we look into culture, technology, we're talking about gaming, we're talking about uh, anything from, you know, video content to Webtoons, uh, Nexon, NCSoft, these are the big names that we all know of. Uh, so I'm going to kind of skim over this because we are a little short on time, but you know, these are kind of the major products and, and kind of the goals of it. So just to point out the goal, it's highlighted in blue. Um, yes, we do have international big conglomerate companies out here as well, but one of the big goals of this area is to get startups some international exposure as well as opening up sales avenues uh, internationally. So that is something that is a big focus here in Pangyo, tech, First Techno Valley. Uh, there are global accelerators of, of the startup campus here, uh, Chinova, Chinova uh, Asia's Global Accelerator Program, as well as SOSA Korea Global Accelerator Program. Very quickly, we'll just briefly touch on kind of the ideas and goals of Pangyo Second Techno Valley. Um, so the goal is to become a global innovation cluster for the 4.0 industry. Um, so giving us an innovative startup space, customized office space for each business stage, um, global network and industry academy partnerships. And then of course, improving communication and uh, having great transportation as well. And, and one of the great things about being in this area, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of in the forefront of tech so uh, we'll mention this in one of the stories, but you know, being able to see improved infrastructure and maybe even driverless vehicles and taxis in the near future. Uh, so yeah, with uh, Pangyo Second Techno Valley, um, you know, we're looking at kind of a combined force here with Techno Valley One as well. Uh, so it's kind of adding to Techno Valley. It's, it's an addition in its own way while adding new supplies or new areas as well. So we're expecting more cutting edge tech clusters, lower rent prices, um, some better urban infrastructure as well. Again, it's a test bed where we can test a lot of the uh, smart devices or smart cars, smart anything, smart stores, uh, as, as we mentioned, the uh, workerless cafes, you know, these kind of things. There are more than 750 new companies as, the, uh, as an expectation of what we're hoping to achieve as well as, of course, world-class innovation clusters. Uh, this is just a very quick slide here on the aspirations, you know, kind of what we're hoping to grow to be a world leading tech cluster of the innovation uh, ecosystem. So that's kind of an overview of uh, the Pangyo Techno Valley area, as well as Pangyo Techno Valley 2. It's really an exciting place to be and to uh, just kind of even, you know, walk around, have lunch at and just see all the new startups, talk to them. We've had a chance to interview many of the new startups that are working here. And so it's, it's just kind of, it's great to be at the ground level and see how it's working. I'm sure in France to, um, you know, being at that ground level and being able to talk to people at Station F, that's part of the excitement as well. Um, so anyway, it's an honor to be here. And that was kind of our quick introduction, hopefully not too fast of uh, <laughs> Pangyo Techno Valley. Now we're gonna jump into a little bit of kind of the big stories that are coming out as well and uh, make sure I don't go over on time here. I got it a good, good about seven or eight minutes left. So we'll briefly touch on kind of the big stories we've talked about in June so far. Uh, and uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in at any time. I'm gonna go ahead and get on to the first one. So the first one is Naver and Naver is uh, one of the big, you know, started off as, as like a, I guess an equivalent of Google here in Korea. It's, it's a search engine, but it's it's more than a search engine. You know, it's 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 news, it's video, it's everything. But what they also do is they uh, they invest in a lot of the startup companies. They have a big presence out here as well. So they announced that over the past six years since the launch of D2SF, which as you can see, their D2 Startup Factory, their in-house accelerator, 
Um, they've invested a total of 40 billion won in 70 startups. And uh, what's kind of exciting about this is the numbers that came out of this. So most of the startups that Neighbor picked were in the early stage of technology or they hadn't even started their business yet. So they're really into going at the ground level and investing in technology as opposed to uh, you know, a business that's already established. So a company with a good idea or a person with a good idea can go a lot further. So they do a lot of initial investments. Um, but among the people that were picked, 99% of them are still in business uh, and 70% of them succeeded in attracting follow-up investment. Uh, so this is kind of exciting news that their sixth year that happened in uh, this past month. So the sixth year of the D2SF with Naver happened as well. Um, but the next news is also about Naver. Uh, well, it's about global content in general, I should say. Um, so you may recognize uh, the other one we mentioned earlier, Cacao. Cacao started off as a, Cacao Talk was basically a messaging app, but it's grown to more than that. So it's now, um, it went from hosting content as well um, to having its own like story feeds. And now it is, it's become, it, uh, they have banking now. It's, it's, a, it's becoming everything basically. And uh, one of the areas that they've expanded into, of course, is um, Webtoons as well. But anyway, there's a big battle going around on around the world uh, between the different content hosting platforms. And what's exciting about it in Korea is they're, because of this, you know, quote unquote battle, they've actually really expanded the reach of where Korean content can go to. So they've, uh, in, they've really tried to penetrate the Southeast Asian markets, as well as any country that speaks French or Spanish. Um, Kakao announced plans to expand its service to the languages of French and Spanish in the second half of the year um, to kind of increase the competition here. Even though Neighbor has the lead in this market, Cacao Webtoon um, has really kind of blown up in, in different places around the world, especially in Southeast Asia. In fact, they got they were ranked first in the comics category in the Blue Google Play Store in Thailand, uh, second in the Apple App Store for entertainment category. So this is kind of a big deal as it competes with not only neighbor but also um you know big companies such as uh streaming services such as uh netflix or any other big content sharing platforms which as i mentioned before though cacao is also now in the business of creating its own content uh jump ahead to the next story this was a big one for me as a science guy growing up my grad you know my um my undergrad is majors in science uh, President Moon met with the AstraZeneca CEO to wish for a smooth supply of the vaccine with support of SK Biosciences. Let me see if I can, I realize I'm cutting off a little bit right here. There we go. Um, but yeah, so AstraZeneca was one of the first uh, vaccines that really became widely available here in Korea. And uh, the when President Moon Jae-in of Korea visited the UK to attend the G7 summit, he also met with AstraZeneca's global CEO on the morning of June 12th. Uh, and kind of the big thing about this is how meaningful AstraZeneca vaccine was to Korea as it was the first vaccine used in Korea uh, starting from February of this year. And so he thanked AstraZeneca for their efforts in supplying the vaccine and helping Korea also become a global vaccine hub. Uh, so also what was emphasized in that was com Korea's commitment to getting vaccines around the world, especially through the COVAX program, uh, international project for the joint purchase of vaccines to get it to areas maybe where it's more difficult or they don't have as much financial resources out there. So that was a big deal, uh, again, for me, but also for Korea as well, this uh, meeting between the AstraZeneca Z CEO and President Moon Jae-in of Korea. The next one is also kind of exciting news for me, and uh, I kind of hinted at it earlier. Uh, and this was the announcement from Gyeonggi Province that the seven kilometer section of the Pangyo Autonomous Driving Demonstration Complex has been designated as a pilot zone for autonomous vehicles by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport. And uh, they're gonna be some various autonomous driving based transportation source services, such as unmanned shuttles and robot taxis that are gonna be test driven here. So really looking forward to seeing kind of how that develops. And of course, if it goes well here, 
uh, it's possible that it will go to other parts of Seoul, Korea, and then of course, maybe the world as well. But um, it's exciting because in Korea, we I mentioned the autonomous, the personless, the workerless cafe. Uh, and it started here, they had their first one here, um, the particular company we interviewed, but now it's already in different parts of Korea. And so if it works in Pangyo, it'll work in other parts of Korea. And that's kind of what um, we're excited to see about this. Uh, some other quick stories, I'm running low on time, but uh, there was a DroneBot and AI partnership between Gyeonggi-do and the South Korean army. Um, they forced a partnership to promote DroneBot and AI technology for innovation and growth of the province's companies, as well as the development of science and technology for the army. The Gyeonggi-do governor, uh, Lee Jae-myung, and the general Nam Young-shin, chief of staff of the Republic of Korean Army, held a business agreement ceremony on June 7th at the Gyeonggi Center for Creative Economy and Innovation in Pangyo, South Korea. Uh, so again, another big deal in that uh, we're kind of in its a mutual agreement, a mutual benefit for not only the South Korean army, but also technology companies, startups here in Korea uh, to be able to really improve the technology in a much faster way. And as we know in the past, um, when you look at military history, oftentimes it's the military that helps um, you know, speed along some of these advancements in science and technology. Uh, so we'll see where that goes, but that was a big announcement or a big uh, meeting member, uh, that uh, took place earlier this month. Uh, we'll go on to the last couple of stories here. Um, quickly, there's a public-private joint next generation advanced based metaverse alliance that launches in Pangyo. The Ministry of Science and ICT said uh, to make a digital new deal and lead the metaverse era to build the foundation with a virtual convergence economic development strategy, we have formed an alliance in which the private companies lead the project and the government supports it. So this is a project um, also working with NIPA, the National IT Industry Promotion Agency, to stimulate work on joint metaverse projects in the metaverse hub to support growth, create and test contents, and train developers for metaverse companies. Uh, so another exciting expansion here, and I, I do enjoy the idea of having the government support, but being led by the private sector as well. Uh, so that'd be good for that industry. Moving along, uh, two more stories quickly. Um, Another exciting factor is, is um, you know, we're used to the three ends as far as uh, gaming is concerned, you know, NCSoft, Nexon, and Netmarble. They usually take the lead in the gaming industry, but is this coming to an end? Medium-sized gaming companies have really caught up and uh, not only are the popularity of their games catching up, but the performance is catching up with that of the three ends. And that's really changing the landscape of the industry. Uh, so they're growing rapidly and posing a threat really to these uh, bigger companies as well. Um, Krafton considered almost as big as the three ends, uh, Smilegate as well, another company that's emerging to disrupt the landscape. Uh, so exciting news coming out of here in the gaming industry. And uh, finally, it's the Digital Open Lab. Gyeonggi-do announced on the 11th this month that Gyeonggi-do Center for Creative Economy and Innovation has been chosen as a managing organization for the uh, digital open lab led by innovation, which was, uh, you know, so they were recruited by the Ministry of Science and ICT. So the project supports digital convergence of ICT and emerging technologies for SMEs and startups, such as 5G and AI, in which the Ministry of Science and ICT invests 48 billion won from government spending for the next five years until 2025. Uh, and Gyeonggi-do finances uh, 1.8 billion won. So they're gonna open the digital open lab, which is about 1,455 square meters in scale uh, in the Pangyo startup campus, which is the you know, innovation, cradle of innovation for budding businesses. So that was very quick. Sorry for running through everything. Um, there's so many stories and we did wanna make sure that we introduced Pangyo to everyone who uh, does not know as much about it. Um, but for now, We'll continue along here and I will relinquish my screen and breathe a second and let Leo take over. And because uh, I want to know a lot about what's going on in France and Paris, um, Station F, you know, it's it's a massive place. And I know you've prepared some slides for us as well uh, to show the scale of it, but also what's going on there. So without further ado, <laughs> would you like to take over from here? 
Yeah, thank you. Um, we we talk about um hanging uh, another time question when we have more free time. Yes. Uh, let me uh, share my screen with you. Thank you for the water. Okay. Um, and this one. Yeah. Can you um can you see everything? Yes. Massive. Tell us about this place. Yeah. It's huge. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, Stationf, which is the world's uh, largest com startup campus uh, in the world, and it's located inside Paris. And uh, yes, on the picture, uh, that's Station F, and Station F is one uh, massive building. We are going to talk about the the building after, but that's Station F basically. So uh, let's first introduce uh, Station F. Uh, Station F is the world's largest startup campus uh, on a mission to empower the next generation of entrepreneurs. It's located in central Paris and backed by entrepreneur Xavier Niel. Uh, he's also a founder of Fre, which is a network, phone network, very famous in France, and um, 42, which is a, a free IT school. And so the uh, 51,000 square meter campus hosts an entire startup ecosystem under one single roof. Uh, at Station F, uh, you can find a startup zone with over 3,000 startup desks divided in 30 different startup programs, including a variety of partner programs and two funders and fighter programs, welcoming more than 200 startups. They also have uh, numerous event spaces, office for investors, tech companies, and public administration, and a co working coffee shop this is very funny uh, because you don't order the coffee you pay by hours and you have unlimited coffee if you want oh. uh, la Fichita, which is a giant we are going to see a picture after it's a huge italian restaurant and more other fun places like this and they also uh, created uh, two years ago a flatmates which is a co-living extension where 600 people can uh, live and co-share uh, co-living uh, in places right away from the campus so um, Station F, the goal of this Station F is empowering the next generation of entrepreneurs. And uh, by creating Station F, Xavier and I wanted to offer entrepreneurs a place to help them bring their ambitious ideas to life as an answer to booming European ecosystem in need of additional infrastructures. It opened in 2017 and Station F has witnessed many success stories. And we're going to see a few of them just after. And there is a quote from uh, Xavier that I really like. Is with Station F, we wish to give a framework to the fragmented startup ecosystem in France and in Europe. I uh, also want to provide entrepreneurs the means to achieve high ambition. And that's very uh, meaning. Just right? the startup ecosystem in France before was a bit broken down, like everyone is trying to do his stuff. And Station F helped a lot uh, to move everything together, at least in Paris. So here is uh, Roxanne Vaza. She's the director of Station F. Uh, she is uh, born and raised in the States. And she is also uh, a point showing that Station F is truly international and not only a French uh, startup ecosystem. Um, and uh, I'm also going to do it quick because uh, we don't have much time uh, <laughs> here. Right so as I said, uh, Station F is only one single building, is one roof. Uh, it was um, a train uh, entrepôt first. It was owned by the train company in France and they didn't use it anymore. And so it got reaffected. And it's 51,000 square meter, it's 310 meters long, so the same size as the Eiffel Tower. Inside, there's more than 1,000 startups at the time, like at the same time, with 30 international programs. And they have also members that are not always there, uh, like a more, more than 100 VCs. And uh, one funny thing is like one third of the residents, the startup uh, residents, are not from France. And even 600 of them don't even speak French. Like the official language of, in Station F is English. Everything is in English in Station F. Like even me, when I exchange with the Station F staff, I speak in English, <laughs> which doesn't make sense because they are French too, but... And as I said, Station F is open to everyone. So you can just go there to grab a coffee if you want, or to meet a startup, or just maybe you're looking for a job, or you just want to discuss, or go to Italian restaurant. And they receive more than 100,000 visitors per year, 
but of course that was before COVID. And um, talking about the international community, so it's right in front, uh, in, in center of Paris. And um, since a lot of people are not coming from France, they don't know how to find a house, etc. So uh, as you see on the right, this actual building uh, that um, Station F managed to renovate and arrange for co-living extension, and they call it flatmates. And so anyone can just uh, easily uh, rent a place there for a month or so and live with other people from Station F. So it's also good to, to meet new people. And they have a very nice app to just book that where you can show your interest and what kind of people you want to meet and live with. So um, let's talk about the intuition again and uh, the most represented countries. And I think the first one you're gonna make a guess and obviously uh, that's the United States. I don't think you're surprised about that. <laughs> and uh, maybe you can make a guess on the second one, but oh, yeah. China. Makes sense. A lot, of, um, yeah, a lot of Chinese company want to uh, come to Europe and France. So uh, Station F is a, a door for them. All right, who would be third then? Uh, third, a uh, bit less obvious, it's Morocco. Huh. Mm. Uh, is, we the main, have a lot of is the main language of Morocco, is it French? Yes. That's why, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it, Arabic and, and, uh, and French, but yeah. Right. And we have a lot of good relation with them, and there's a lot of startups that uh, want to make link between the two. And the fourth one uh, is interesting, is South Korea. There we go. Yeah. How about that? And uh, one good thing about um, that is like um, in uh, Station F, there's two startup program that's uh, Korean. The first one is obviously Samsung, and the second one is Neighbor. Huh. That have their own uh, startup program in partnership with uh, Line, as you can see in the background. And so uh, it's a space green, and the second one is by Naver and Line, and it's consumer focused program that uh, welcome entrepreneur and early test startups for only B2C, like a consumer um, product in digital content, mobile product and e-commerce. Like, as you say, I think you was working on that on that. And there's 24 startup there with, uh, in 2017, there is 75 million euro. So it's not bad. It's, it, they're good on, uh, we're going to see the uh, actual number uh, that was raised in 2017 and it's a good part of it. And uh, sorry, skipped. And that's the slide. So yeah, uh, Naver, the startup in the Naver program raised uh, 75 million euro in uh, 2017. And the uh, global old uh, program in Station F in 2017 raised 350 million. So the Naver program is doing very good. And Station F, is very helping all the startups uh, to raise money, to help them grow, et cetera, because of all the VC inside and all the alumni uh, funders that help. And so they are raising a lot of money everywhere to make the, the startup grow and uh, go out eventually of the incubators. That's the goal of incubators. Um, let's talk about the Hall of Fame and all the, the five most Maybe not, there's more than that, but the five most famous for me uh, companies from Station F. So there's Stanley, Luco, Yuka, Crafty, and Mito Glasses. Um, Stanley is part of the Zen Desk program at Station F. The company provides a solution to reduce customer support uh, thanks to interactive step-by-step uh, -step guide. It can be integrated in a product, chat, help center, and uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. And Super Tool uh, was created in 2019 by uh, Alexi Vogel, co founder of Dashlane, which is also a, a French startup. In 2020, they raised 3 million euro and they are still uh, working to grow and uh, be a very successful startup. Luco is an interesting one. It's um, a new age for to um, new generation of home insurance. And uh, it's created in 2018, and it was part of the HEC uh, Paris program, Station F. HEC is a French uh, law and communication school, not law, uh, communication marketing school. 
In 2020, they raised 50 million euro and they are part of the French Tech 120. Uh, in 2021, uh, it's the 120 most successful startup in France. Yuka is well known by people uh, and it's an app and it's a mobile app that I just scan uh, the food you're eating. You're just scanning the food, you're scanning the, the barcode of the food and also on cosmetic and telling you if they're good or bad for your health in case of your preference health. And it can also tell you on the cosmetic if uh, everything is dangerous inside or harmful for you. Crafty is a platform that make a skill explicit and receivable within the company. It was part of the founder company and it got bought by Talents of in 2020. And My Job Glasses it was also from the HEC, uh, Paris Program Station F, and connects professional with students and younger age to provide them a real insight of the work world. And it was created in 2015 and they raised uh, 5 million euro last year. So even during COVID, uh, the startup are doing good, especially the, everything digital and online. And um, we can now talk about uh, interesting news is VivaTech that was canceled last year. Um, probably you know about VivaTech. Uh, I know like uh, having news normally is uh, covering VivaTech. And it opened again uh, two weeks ago. And 13,000 startups from uh, 125 countries and turning online and physically. <coughs> um, yeah, this one, it was a um, hybrid event this year. It was very nice. And more than 30 startups uh, from Station F were there. And uh, I made a short selection of um, five of them that I think are interesting to talk about. Our pure is an uh, anti-pollution mask. That is um, not very suitable for COVID because there's an uh, exhaust pipe on it. But it's very nice for motorbike and bicycle. And it's made in France. Battery for people uh, um, is uh, providing better understanding of batteries and also helping the recycling of um, a tree car battery. Sorry. Le Pape Pondu developed 100% vegan eggs, which is very interesting. It looked like a, a, an egg, uh, but vegan. And this is solution for pastries. We need eggs to. to <laughs> Um, Booksy brings solution for the daunting charge of managing real-time availability and booking for retail industries. And Livia AI use AI to build virtual assistants that can have a conversation with human about anything. So that was five startup uh, in VivaTech. And if we continue on the on the news, uh, Station F this week is currently hosting a vaccine site with. Um, not AstraZeneca, but with um, Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. So more than 5,000 doses would be available and everyone can just go and get vaccinated. Um, I'm sorry. <coughs> and uh, that's another startup, Juvens. Um, they raised really recently, um, I think uh, one month ago. Almost 2 million euro to just uh, go abroad. And, um, and they want to offer uh, adult uh, treatment for way less expensive and easier accessibility. And <clears throat> they raised that uh, almost 2 million euro to just um, develop abroad and in Europe, especially like Belgium, Spain, and Italy, and also to raise much more. People. And as I was saying, uh, saying right before, uh, Station F went 100% digital. And they opened uh, last summer a uh, TV recording studio inside uh, Station F, like in the physical place. And everyone can uh, just book the place and uh, organize a show or record something for the company. So it's very nice. Did you say wedding? No, I, I say for the company. Oh, that, that's really cool. That's a really cool setup they have there. Uh, that's yeah, really, yeah, nice. that's really neat. Oh, and uh, one thing is like uh, all the screen, all the lights, etc., is personalized, so you can make a for your company like your company style, and you can host five people uh, because of um, social distance. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you can uh, fucking want to make a conference there. It's very nice. That's and really um, cool. yeah, that's really neat. I like that idea. Yeah, yeah we, we should uh, organize that in more uh, st uh, like startup uh, community. And uh, one other news is like a uh, TikTok and Station F are now working together, and they are working together to uh, provide Station F access to TikTok community to promote the startups and offer new ideas for the startup members or so. And uh, I think I'm almost out of time, so I'm just going to show you some pictures of Station F or uh, places I like. Wow! And uh, that's the um, Italian restaurant I was talking about. So all the inside is, is uh, uh, an Italian restaurant where you can find many uh, spots where you can buy food or drinks. And you can eat inside or outside. It's uh, when you start training because it's just a very nice weather. Um, it's a huge place that uh, is inside the building and it's very, very nice. And that's the um, and as a view from the main building. You can see everything is uh, cozy. Everything is... Uh, uh, made for the people to stay inside but not feel pressure by because they are in under walls. A lot of nature, a lot of art, a lot of colors, and it's very open, it's very bright, a lot of sun. And here um, they also have um, a conference room. For example, this uh, Xavier Nett here is the founder mm -hmm. and is um, from time to time coming to Station F and presenting like a uh, question session and talking with the people and is very he's a billionaire but he's just coming there and speaking with everyone and walking around and say hi to people and it's very very friendly and very nice and you can see also like some other point of view of station f inside uh, it's very bright very sunny a lot of art we're gonna put this pile of art no one knows in sun but because i mean i bought it and if I if you think it's attractive. And um, that's another point of view, like um, this small cubicle, like people can uh, book to work or they have the office and many meeting place. And I think uh, that's enough for, for now to talk about Station F. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. Is, is that a staircase that goes underneath the first floor? Like there's like walkway? Yeah, um, yeah, let me. Yeah, you can see. There's okay. the underground. There's more spaces, not walking spaces, but the um, meeting room is underground. Oh, cool. uh, the meeting room opens, and that's all the uh, uh, toilets and places like this. Mm. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing this with us. I, first of all, I'd love to say I I would love to visit this one day and, and check it out. It's a really cool environment here. I love the, mm -hmm. the TV studio. I love the cafe idea of you pay by the hour, not by the coffee. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, I didn't even realize it until you said it. It's a train station. Is that why it's called Station F? It was not a train. It's not actually a train station. It not was a train a station. Train people. But yeah, yeah. It, it's ah, really cool. okay. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing that today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we took time to share some of the issues that are going on in Pangyo as well as in Paris with Station F. And uh, these are two organizations that are certainly helping to lead in innovation in Korea and in France, but also international companies that come into these places uh, and work. So a special thank you to the CEO of Le Café to Geek. That would be Leo Tevene. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for hosting me today and uh, letting me come and present about, and talk about Station F. Was uh, yep. interesting to also learn about Pengu. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, we are going to have a meetup again on the 27th of July. Uh, so I want to thank everyone who came here. Hope to see you next time. But before we end, uh, I would also like to thank Moon Young Im, who is the Gyeonggi Do Future Growth Policy Bureau Officer. And uh, thank you so much for coming. The station of Pengu and Seon Young Charles is in the Akasajinil Punika. 아, 정말 세계 최대의 스타트업 어, 캠퍼스처럼 아주 예쁘고 어, 아름다운 공간이 코로나19가 끝나면 꼭 한번 음, 가보고 싶습니다. 어, 한국 기업들도 많이 참여하고 있다 보니까 어, 앞으로도 그 스테이션 F와 우리 판교 테크노밸리가 
같이 이런 기회를 자주 만들어서 서로 많은 정보를 공유했으면 좋겠습니다. 오늘 감사합니다. Again, thank you everyone for joining and that will wrap up uh, today's meetup and I will see everyone hopefully next time.